Hi guys, this is Christina from Speak Better Feel Great TV, the place to boost your English and boost your career. This week we have another very special episode with a very special guest, Mathilde Piton, who is a French woman who has lived in the US for four years now and who has a fantastic blog, Mathilde.com, where she writes about her travels in the US, about life in the US as a French person, cultural differences, expat life, and it's absolutely fabulous. And I'm very, very honored to have her as a guest for this special episode. In Boston, Mathilde is a jack of all trades, or as she describes it, un couteau suisse. She gives guided tours of Boston in French. She's a travel writer, she's a translator, and, and like all freelancers, she's just full of energy and lots of great projects. Um, in the conversation you'll hear, we'll talk about uh, the things that really grab your attention when you first arrive in the US, um, about working with the US, the differences in attitudes, mentality, and also about speaking, of course, with Americans, pronunciation, which is a big uh, hot topic here at Speak Better Feel Great TV. And uh, you'll see that Mathilde, she's got so much, um, so many insights to share with you about what it's like living and working with the Americans every day. And uh, I hope you will enjoy this interview as much as I enjoyed speaking with Mathilde. So, hi Mathilde. Um, first of all, I want to just say thank you um, for all of the wonderful articles and the information on your blog because it's, uh, you know, just very interesting for me as an American living in France to read about um, the perspective of a French person living in the United States. So, uh, and thanks for taking some time to talk to us and to talk to the members of the Speak Better Feel Great community who are very interested in things like cultural differences. So just a big thanks. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, maybe first of all, could you just maybe tell us a little bit um, about your blog? I mean, what can we find there? Why do you write it? Who Who is it for? So the blog, uh, I have this blog for, it's been like four years because I've been in the U.S. for four years now. It changes over time. Yeah, it has, swift, uh, so like it has, it has shifted. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so so there are three angles, basically. That The first is my life here in Boston, right. in Massachusetts. So it's about like going out to the restaurant, hiking in the mountains, going to the beach or some kind of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Celebrating Halloween. Yeah. There's the travels, as you mentioned. Like yeah. I, I try to travel as much as I can in the U.S. I'm a mm. travel writer, so I okay. get to visit many places. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then there's also the expat life. Mm. Like, how is it to be a French person in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. But it tends to be... I tend to post less and less about this because it's been a long time, so I'm less surprised by mm. things. I get used to them. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, I, I, yeah after a certain amount of time, you you start forgetting that things were weird or different and, and it yeah. just becomes normal. And I don't, I don't know if this has happened to you, but it's like um, sometimes when I go back to the U.S., I'm surprised at things that are that are normal in the U.S. Um, <laughs> yeah, but in this case, I would do, uh, when I come back to France, then I will do, okay, this is how I experience France. Yeah. And, you know, the, I don't know, cult cultural shock. I think yeah, yeah, like reverse culture shock. Reverse, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you get, um, yeah, it's interesting because you see your own culture from like an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really interesting. I remember one time when I went to, to pay for something um, and I asked, though, I was like, do you take a bank card for less than $15? Dollars? And she just looked at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's not. France. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And so what, talking about differences, um, when you first arrived in the U.S., um, what are, what are, what were some of the big differences that really jumped out? Well, 
I think the thing is that it, it's there's a trick. It looks the same. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like going to South Asia or to some really different country. Mm-hmm. Like it looks the same, but everything is different. Like yeah. from the way you cross the street, the fact that the light is up in the air, <laughs> right? Of the street or the, it's on the other side of the street. Uh, tiny details, like also when you go to the bathroom and you want to open the shower, mm. like the to open the show is very different yeah I, I had a friend here from france and she she was staying at my place and she went into the bathroom and she came back with the towel around her and she was like how do you <laughs> open the, the, the shower uh, yeah. so, uh, so that's that's the tiny stuff or even when you want to order a coffee mm-hmm. like it's diff- everything is different when you tip at the restaurant for instance yeah Exactly. So all this tiny stuff in the daily life, then obviously there's the difference in the way you interact with mm. people. Mm-hmm. Or people are different. That's also probably why I, 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 sp- I write less and less on my blog because I, I have many American friends and mm. I don't want to to be too general, like to do like yeah. too... Like, like stereotypes life. or big general, <laughs> Americans do this. And yeah, you always yeah. have five Americans go, no, I never do that. Like, yeah. Well, there That's are also so many of you. I mean, compared to France, the U.S. are so huge. Yeah. And each time I go somewhere else, than, each time I'm traveling to another place in Boston, I'm like, okay, this is, this is different. The food is different. Yeah. And so that's also a big thing. The country is huge. Ah, it's yeah. obvious to say it, but... Uh, yeah. But Boston, the city of Boston stays quite small. Like mm-hmm. you can walk around, you can bike. When I first moved here, my friends in France were like, you will need a car. You will you won't, will never walk again. Right, like, yeah. No, it's not true in Boston. It's maybe true in some parts of maybe, I don't know, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, right. It's always my example of... <laughs> <laughs> the stereotypical Typical. American town, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, so so that that's some of the big differences. But, and what about the, like, the mentality and the American mentality and the attitude, maybe towards French people? I mean, are they very friendly? Or is there a tension? Because it's sort of a, <laughs> in French, je t'aime, moi non plus relationship sometimes. H- how is that being a French person in the United States? Well, it's been awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. No, just, oh, I'm just good. kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, I'm just, yay <laughs> for my countrymen. <laughs> um, no, it's been great. It's been great. Um, uh, people are really positive. To, uh, like, there, there's no... I was not surprised by the stereotypes that mm. I found here. Like it's the same. I travel in Europe, so I know what we can say about French people. So they are the same here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I first got here, for instance, I didn't know anybody. So yeah. I would go to a yoga class and say, at each at the beginning of the yoga class, I'd say, does anybody is injured or has something to tell me? And I say, yeah, I'm French. I don't I don't speak a really good English. <laughs> <laughs> and and people would react really positively. And mm. I got friends with my yoga teacher saying to that, oh, we can have a coffee. And we oh, yeah. actually have coffee. So yeah, I, think, I think maybe more like in the year of uh, the Bush uh, mm. president, presidency, yeah. it was more complicated in some parts of the country. Sure. I heard like it would be yeah, more complicated. But for me, it was always nice. I was surprised by one stereotype. Yeah. Uh, uh, that we are quitter, like French people are quitter. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like they, they abandon things. Yeah, that we give up. Okay. Uh, so I was surprised that it's kind of a joke sometimes. Yeah, uh, I think that's. Um, it, it's uh, yeah, I think I think that probably you know it comes from what is it World War Two. Um, you know, Americans, they always make the joke like, oh, well, we, we saved you in World War II because you guys yeah. gave up. And uh, yeah, no, that's true. I, I, I sometimes joke with my husband about that. But I know that in reality, you know, it's a joke. Um, mm-hmm. And in, in reality, of course. So no, I, I mean, it's yeah, it's I think I think, you know, in every country that you go to, there are cultural differences, but everybody is sort of the same human being mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. deep down inside. Exactly. OK, well, that's good. So it's, it's, a, it's been a very positive experience. Yeah, but sometimes there's a lot of expectation coming from my American friends or people I don't really know that, oh, pa- oh Paris fashion. And then I'm like, no, now I can wear sweatpants in the streets. I'm like, <laughs> right. 
<laughs> so one time it was uh, a, a, it's a silly story but I went to a shop I mm -hmm. think it was Mad Madwell uh -huh. and the girl like she was really young and she said she asked me like the girl like the the cashier she yeah. said are you French uh, do you only buy Chanel <laughs> like, yes of course <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I think oh, yeah so I, it was cute like it was a cute yeah exactly like a uh, yeah a funny little uh, yeah, it, it's funny these these like stereotypes that people imagine of you. I'm trying to think. I yeah, I don't think I've had any. I'm sure I have had s people say things similar. Like I don't I don't know. You know, do you do you wear cowboy hats all the time or something? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, it's it's just the image that people have. And since mm -hmm. I, maybe you're the maybe the only French person that they've met, they're like, oh, I have to ask, do you really have everything Chanel at your house? <laughs> yeah, but that's cute, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. That's nice. Mm, yeah. And um, now what about speaking English? Um, because, you know, Americans aren't really famous for their foreign language skills. Um, so is it, first of all, when you arrived in the U.S., um, how, how was your English? Uh, I think it was fine because I was, I, I had friends from Germany or Italy, Spain, mm. so we would speak English as, as the, as the, the language. The common language, yeah. But I think it's different when you, when I got here, because here first they have a really strong accent. Mm -hmm, yeah. I feel like when you're in California, um, in the Midwest, it's easier because... The accent is much softer. Okay, yeah. But, uh, so yeah, I was surprised sometimes. It was more about me being understood by the people. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the most challenging part. Oh yeah. And the thing is that I also for the reading, I was I, I I never read in English when I was in France. Sure, yeah. And I love reading in French, so I would like just read in, in French. Yeah, but sure. here, buying a book is exp in French is expensive, and I thought yeah. since I'm living here, I want to be. A part of the I want to know stuff about the culture yeah, so I really, right. only to read in English so but I started really low like I read uh, Hunger Games yeah and I thought it's it's easy to read and I was getting used to reading English and now I can read I think I can read pretty much anything oh yeah and, and so 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 yeah okay. but I, people are really tolerant I feel here about okay the, yeah. about the yeah because perhaps they're I, I don't know maybe they're, they're you know there's so many different um, immigrant populations in the U.S. that maybe they just are used to speaking yeah. to people with different accents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so you said it was, so did you say it was more difficult for you to understand the Americans or for them to understand you? Uh, for me to, for me to be understood. Mm -hmm. Is it correct? Yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> yeah. To understand me. Exactly right. That's it. Uh, yeah. Um, because of, because of, because I mean, your 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 English. I mean, it's absolutely fabulous. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> but it's no. w was it because of the? I mean, what was it that caused the the miscommunication? Uh, I, I think it was just not easy at the beginning to be able to speak f uh, fluently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to um, I worked actually on the way I would pronounce stuff. Okay. I I had a conversation partner at first. Yeah. yeah. And. I would just because I I I, lear, I I learned English for so long when I was in France, yeah, but sure. so I kind of had like the structure, but yeah. I need more practice. Mm -hmm. So we would work on how to say I don't know towel for instance, yeah, or awesome, or I don't know cow. So yeah. she, I would just be I would just do that. I would just she would be like I would see the word cow, so I would be it would be co. She would say no, it's cow. So I would just be cow, cow, cow. cow. It's <laughs> okay. same. So I would just be at first. I would say towel. I didn't know how to say it. Right. Yeah. No, you have to say towel. And now it's easy. Now I say towel. Okay. Oh yeah. So th that's really interesting. So in fact, the the way that you um, not, not corrected. It's not correcting an accent, but the way that you managed to make yourself more easily understood was really by focusing and really repeating specific sounds yeah. with someone yeah. okay yeah. how to say yeah how to say a word but she would also if we would go to the restaurant she would tell me no you don't say can i take a plate of french fries she said, no you don't say take you say can i have exactly and french she would say est-ce que je peux, avoir, que je peux prendre yeah uh, 
on say text. So this kind of uh, tiny little stuff, yeah. and then reading, listening to stuff, talking to people, it gets better. Mm, yeah. So it was like, it was, yeah, it's it's almost like you know you you are, you had the the basics already. Um, and then your your partner, your conversation partner, really helped you with like the little the little secrets, the little keys. Yeah. Like like you say, you don't say I take French fries. I say I have French yeah. fries. These little but there's things. a different. The, I feel like the 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 reason is really different. So you, I felt I had to work on this the yeah. way I would talk and yeah. the way I would stress on some words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how how did you do that? How did you work on that? Just by repeating stuff. Okay. Yeah. Listening and know. repeating. Yeah, okay. yeah, I but know. not formally. Like I would just, I would just like she would help me doing it, and then I would try to do it. Okay. Oh, there's also the I just heard myself seeing the H. Yeah, uh, that's also something I had to work on, like not to be like, can you can you help me? Ah, can yeah, right. Me? Can you oh. help me? And how how did you how did you um. Like, what did you do so that that becomes automatic? That you don't really have to think about it. Well, well, I'm, my husband is French, and we are living together, so we don't speak English together. Sure, but yeah. uh, we have many friends here, so it's just the fact that we were spending time with them, and we wanted to have interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think more this kind of practice. Then I, I worked for a year in a company, and I just had to 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 speak more so, fluently. Yeah, like so, you, you just had to adapt. In fact, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I guess at first it was not automatic, and then it became it, be, it became more and more uh, automatic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, that's okay. So it's yeah, it's really conscious work on a specific thing, listening and repeating, which which is, yeah. you know, it, it sounds really basic, but I mean that it works. Yeah. Exactly. Because I mean you. Yeah, I, mean, I feel it's like learning a song or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just listen, repeat, do it again, and uh, yeah, and um. You you mentioned that that you worked, um, in you know, because work culture can be a bit different. Also, um, what what advice would you give to someone who who works with Americans, at, you know, as a French person who has worked with Americans? Well, I was surprised by tiny stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the way people write emails. Yeah, for example, it's. <laughs> it's I, felt like it was really straightforward like in France maybe it was in my company maybe it's just specific to me yeah, but sure, I feel yeah. you do more you do more how are you how's your day going and there's a lot of uh, 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 dans l'attente de mes salutations maybe it's too much but yeah. there's a lot of stuff around formal the, fluff yeah, yeah right. and here I felt like it was just do this do that and it, there was no uh, there was no there was nothing to it was really straightforward okay almost. yeah so they send you a message it's got the, yeah. the, the key message in it and you know yeah. it's like what time does the meeting start yeah and I, at first I thought oh that's rude but then I said no that's just the way it is like the my boss was like really sweet and anything but she yeah. would be just okay I need an information I just give you the information here it is Oh, yeah, so it's so, quite direct to the point. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah, interesting. Then as a French, I felt that I was concerned about the way I talk. I had a lot of meetings over the phone. Ah, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, those are awful. <laughs> yeah, with people working on the West Coast, so there was like a different time. So I would be yeah. on the phone on my, with my computer and people would do a, a meeting like that. Yeah. And I would be concerned that, okay, I need to understand every, any, everything. Yeah. Because if they ask me stuff, I need to be ready. Right. So um, I was concerned about me not understanding English so well mm -hmm. and I said that's pre uh, uh, considerable uh, I said that a lot to my boss and at some point she told me to stop saying that okay to yeah confident and she said to speak more loudly ah uh, yeah sometimes sure. I don't understand you because you your voice is too low okay yeah and because I would see people just like turning like to me this way what yeah mm -hmm. But I feel sometimes, yeah, this, this advice of being confident and it doesn't matter so much, I feel, for American people when somebody make mistake. Mm, yeah. Uh, like, like it's, it's you know, the, the more important thing is, is to be able to communicate. Uh, so yeah. you need to, to do things like, like speak loudly, uh, just put your sentence out yeah. there and, and not ask yourself the question like, oh, is, is that past simple or 
present perfect simple. Yeah. <laughs> mm, right. Just, just ask the question. But yeah, it's it's true that, um, and I think maybe just, I mean, as a natural part of conversation, because Americans, I mean, we don't always understand each other perfectly also. I mean, it's anyone who communicates, yeah. that's the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're used to saying things like, I don't know what you said. I don't understand. What do you mean? And I think... As someone speaking a foreign language, we automatically say, "Oh, it's it's because of me." Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a good that's a good point. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes it's just because you have a complicated idea, or it's not well explained. It's not the the, the way you speak. Yeah, but exactly. I would also said so to speak more loudly and yeah. sometimes to speak sl- uh, more slowly. Yes, slower, slowly. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Hear yeah. it, I don't and sometimes I think it's a good thing to I think you posted something about not saying uh, too much yes <laughs> I think that's a good point like you just don't you just take your time to say things and you don't say uh, because it's I think Amer- Americans don't do that mm. oh yeah they, it's maybe they I, I think what what I do is I know I, I repeat things a lot um, I'll start with a phrase and then I'll repeat a little part of that phrase Or people just stop talking, and then they think about what they want to yeah. say. But yeah, and there's no uh da 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 uh <laughs> right yeah okay. And um, maybe just one final thing. Um, if you had to give one piece of advice, uh, one <laughs> to someone who um, who wants to come and either live in the U.S. or just visit the U.S. Um, one piece of advice for interacting with Americans, what would that be? That's a hard question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, the first thing that comes in mind, that would be don't be shy. Mm, mm-hmm. And okay. I feel like here people, even, th- even when you don't know them, they speak to you really easily. They would say, I don't know, nice shirt, nice, nice earrings, yeah. even though you don't know them. And the... In, So yeah, don't be shy and yeah, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay. Exactly. Take the opportunity and try. No, that's a, that's a brilliant piece of advice. I think that's um, pr- maybe one of the most important things is just try. Yeah, exactly. just try. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. Um, well, thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Mito. It's a very, very interesting conversation. Lots of thank you, good points, and and I'm just. Um, no, it's very interesting to hear the perspective from a French person in the U.S. Also, yeah. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Mathilde. Thank you. And, uh, Bye-bye. And I'll see you on the internet. Bye. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that conversation, and I hope that you learned a lot about what it's like to speak and work with Americans. And I hope that you feel also encouraged that if you make mistakes, it's okay. The most important thing is to try to speak, and, and don't worry too much about about your accent or about making mistakes. The most important thing is communication. And as I said before, I really hope that you will go and check out Mathilde's blog, matildi.com. I'll also put a link to it in the notes below this video. You'll see she has fabulous travel articles about her adopted, her adopted hometown, Boston, New England, California, the national parks, New Orleans lots of great places, articles about life in the U.S., about cultural differences, and it's just a really fascinating blog. So I encourage you to go check that out. And in the meantime, I will just say that I will see you next time on Speak Better, Feel Great TV. See you later.